Hi everyone, good to see you again. I'm Anne Marie Green. A disturbing new report reveals just how grim conditions are inside border detention facilities in South Texas. New photos show severe overcrowding. The Homeland Security Department's Inspector General even says that at one facility, some adults were held in standing room only conditions for a week. Now Democratic lawmakers are demanding to hear from top immigration officials about the mistreatment of migrants. CBS News cor correspondent Maria Villarreal reports. Love, not hate, makes America great. Across the country Tuesday, hundreds of people turned out for protests demanding migrant detention centers be closed. We are collectively astounded and horrified at the cruelty that is going on at our border. The Office of Inspector General released these photos Tuesday, allegedly showing dangerous overcrowding at several Border Patrol facilities. This one from early June apparently shows 71 men being held in a cell with a capacity for 41 women at Border Patrol's Fort Brown station in Texas. In its new report, the office says overcrowding is so bad, desperate detainees at one facility went so far as to clogging toilets with mylar blankets and socks in order to be released from their cells during maintenance. Investigators also say they observed overcrowding at facilities where children are being held and that many are being held longer than legally allowed. At three facilities they visited, investigators say children had no access to showers and at two facilities, no access to hot meals. This video of a 12-year-old migrant girl speaking to her immigration attorney about the alleged conditions of the Border Patrol facility in Clint, Texas, is where she was held for 12 days. They gave us little food. Some children did not bathe, the girl said in Spanish. They were mean to us. Maria Villarreal joins me now from McAllen, Texas, just outside one of the Border Patrol facilities highlighted in this report. So, you know, this stuff is really disturbing. Um, we had heard about some of the conditions from um, advocates who were allowed to visit some of these facilities, the lawmakers who were allowed to visit some of these facilities. But this is coming from the government, right? Uh, verifying what many have said is going on. So how many different facilities did the investigators visit? So they were able to visit five Border Patrol facilities and two ports of entries here along the southern border. They did this about three weeks ago in early June, and then they talked to uh, a lot of the workers inside as well as some of the migrants that are being held here as well. And then were conditions consistent throughout all of the facilities or are some better than others? I think they saw a little bit of everything at some of these facilities. You know, at three facilities, for example, they had children that were not uh, given access to showers. At two of the facilities, they had uh, children that weren't receiving hot meals. So I think at every different facility, there were some sort of problems. But, but one manager at the facility said it's very clear, however, that this situation in general as a whole along the southern border, this is a ticking time bomb. Yeah, that, that was the quote. Um, the incoming president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, her name is Dr. Sarah Zo uh, Goza, she toured two of the CBP facilities last week, and she told CBS News that they, they're no, this is not a place for children, right? Let's listen to how she describes what she saw inside the facilities. When they opened the door, the first thing that we, that we, that hit us was a smell, and it was a smell of sweat urine and feces. And I heard crinkling to my left and I looked over there and there was a sea of silver. And there were young children, uh, boys in there, unaccompanied boys in there. And they had no expressions on their faces. There was no laughing, no joking, no talking. I describe them almost like dog cages um, with people in each of them. And the silence were just hard to watch, hard to see. So this is not, you know, uh, uh, maybe a migrant uh, ad advocacy group. This is a body uh, representing physicians in this country that essentially does not take on sort of a partisan stance on anything. How significant is it to hear from the incoming president of the American Pediatrics uh, Society? 
You know, I think it's extremely significant to hear from somebody that basically doesn't have a, you know, a stake in the game per se. You know, she's not looking at this at, on a Republican side or a Democrat side. She's looking at it as uh, I am here to uh, take a look at these children to find out how they are doing and then relay that to the general public. So I think that this is pretty significant because, you know, she doesn't, you're not going to get anything biased from her. This is what it is. This is what she saw. Yeah. So I should just clarify, she's the incoming president for the American Academy of Pediatrics. So previously, the Department of Homeland Security officials have disputed reports of unsanitary conditions at Border Patrol facilities. Acting DHS Secretary Kevin Mc McAleenan even called allegations from the Clint facility unsubstantiated, and he called it clean and well managed. Has the department had anything to say about this report? So, so here is what I will say. We spent most of yesterday trying to reach out to not only local Customs and Border Protection um, representatives, but also our contacts in D.C. as well. And nobody was uh, getting back to us for this particular story. However, they did respond to the OIG. They acknowledged the findings in the report. It did not sound like, from what I read in the memo from McAleenan's office to the OIG, that they were disputing that this had been found in these facilities. And basically they said, look, we have no other options at this point. We are overrun. This is an acute and, and worsening crisis. Uh, we have to figure out how to stop the influx or at least slow it down or else these facilities are going to keep keep backing up. So a couple of the ways that they've done that is they've put tents along the border to help with the processing of these migrants. So they're not all going to these detention facilities, kind of like the brick and mortar locations. Uh, there are two facilities, one in Donna, Texas, which is about 30 minutes from us, and then one in El Paso. And there is plans to put another new facility up, a tent facility along the border to help with uh, processing. We also know that just a few days ago, another detention facility, a brick and mortar location, was opened up just outside San Antonio in Carrizo Springs. That one is supposed to remain open until January of 2020, and the cost is $300 million. So, yes, they are going to be using a lot of that aid that has been allocated for this, over uh, $4.6 billion, but you can see that the cost of, of managing this crisis is going to be very large. It's going to rack up very quickly, Anne-Marie. Yes, meanwhile, uh, people are still coming to and crossing the border, uh, and the need is uh, uh, greater than ever. Maria Villarreal, thank you.